and all that, but it works. <laughs> works. <laughs> yeah, Amazing. Yeah. I love also. your necklace. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. It was a gift when I was in South Africa by a friend. So thank wow. you. Wow. Oh, so nice. Okay, I see our time is almost Very. up and uh, we have a few guests and um, Toastmasters that have joined us. Anita, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, Ankita. Ankita, Ankita. okay. Thank you. I was just listening to Diane. It was really wonderful to see everybody looking uh, all traditional and ethnical. <laughs> wow. Sorry, just a, a question. Ankita, are you doing your, you're doing level one project two, first speech or second speech? Second speech. Okay, please kindly quickly send me the feedback you received from the first speech. If you can sure, just send sure. it to me on WhatsApp, that will be appreciated. Sure, sure. I am sh I'm sharing it with you. Okay. We have Guba Santosh. You're most welcome. Grace, good to see you here. Wow. Yeah. I love your headgear. <laughs> yeah, I had that day's um, club from India, so I... <laughs> 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 okay, so you're playing the Indian touch. Okay, you're all, you're somehow there. <laughs> somehow. Welcome, Chris. Brenda, you remember Chris? She was your evaluator last time. Of course, I cannot forget her. <laughs> Come back, Chris. Yeah, I love her background too. So beautiful. Um, I, wish, I wish the light was good because I have that the background they've said people are trying to make the book one. <laughs> I don't know whether you've seen the articles about people manufacturing backgrounds for Zoom with the books and everything. It's just hilarious. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the virtual background. Creativity. Okay. We have somebody called HK. Please rename yourself. Nikita, you're most welcome. Hi, good wow. morning, one and all. Hi, Rena. Good morning. Good morning. Ankash Kuma, you forgive me for the pronunciation. <laughs> You're most welcome. I think uh, we'll hi have everyone. some. Good morning. Good morning. Shamim, you're welcome. Jay Beleko, namaste. Namaste. Good bunny. Bunny was sitting in Uganda. I'm telling you, we're getting challenged. So, Alex, can you reply in uh, Indian? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Bunny, just to say, you really look beautiful. I love the outfits and. Thank you. You, you guys have provoked me with a beautiful, beautiful message on WhatsApp that come with a traditional look. So I did. <laughs> and so do you, so all of you, so do all of you. I think I missed that traditional wear message in WhatsApp. <laughs> Just oh, in a hurry, I, I got ready video. and I'm here now. <laughs> Was I right in saying Jay Baliko? Is that right? Yes. 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 Yeah. You got it right. Bye. Nikita, you can still quickly rush and put something on your head or something on top of whatever you're wearing. It's <laughs> never too late. Yeah. <laughs> Wrap something around, whatever, you know, feel free. <laughs> okay, we have uh, other guests joining in. Vemolia, hi. Uh, somebody hi. with an iPhone. Hi. hi iPhone. Hello. Hello. Good morning. IPhone. Morning. Morning, always. Morning. Okay. So we'll have some time to introduce ourselves later after the meeting. So it's already eight o'clock. Let me share my screen and I will begin.
A very good morning, our Toastmasters and guests, our friends from JPMC. You're most welcome to this meeting, the joint meeting. I think ever since I've been in Sunrise Club, this is our second joint meeting. I think the first one was with uh, Rotary Club, one of the Rotary Clubs here in Kampala. So this is our second one. And it's a very special one because of the cultural wear. As you can see the demo, um, the Uganda dressing for a man, and then the Indian wear. Very, very special. And I can see some of you dressed in your different cultural wears. You all look amazing. Thank you so much. Um, so this is our 46th meeting of Kampala Sunrise. Okay. Yes, Kampala Sunrise. So welcome on board. Flight number 4B7. Service from Kampala Sunrise Club to JP Morgan, Hyderabad. Our rules on board is let's keep our microphones muted if we are not speaking. Let's keep our videos on where possible to keep a non-verbal engagement. Let's also use the interaction icons on this platform. You can either raise your hand, clap your hands and uh, use the chat box to give any comments, uh, especially when after the speaker has spoken, then rename, let's rename ourselves. If you have a role, you can indicate the role. If you're from another club, indicate the club. If you are a guest, indicate that you're a guest. My name is Atwine Brenda, and I'm your sergeant at arms this morning. Just to remind you of our theme, Toastmasters, magic. Magic representing mentorship, we appreciate, give, identify, and care. Also to remind you about our club mission as Toastmasters, we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop their communication and leadership skills resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Yes, we have babies that we are born on this date of March 18th. And it's a surprise that we are all born on the same date in the month of March. Let's celebrate our very own member, Linda Nabainda. Happy birthday, Linda. Happy birthday. We celebrate you celebrate you this morning. And our area director, area number 18, Susan Kavuma. I know she's not here, but we celebrate you, Susan. We celebrate you, happy birthday. And lastly, Alex Agaba, our very own Alex Agaba PR. Alex, we celebrate you, happy birthday. We are only waiting to cut cake with you. So you let us know where cake cutting will be done. So thank you so much. I all wish you the best time in this meeting. I hand it over to my president, Miss Anne Awori, to speak to us. And you're most, most welcome, our dear lovely president. Thank you so much, Brenda Atwine, our Sergeant at Arms. I am indeed in the flight. I've tightened my seatbelt and I hope everybody has done so. Thank you everyone who has joined us, joined us this morning, fellow Toastmasters, Rotarians and guests from all over the world. Thank you for joining us this morning. 
for this beautiful joint meeting celebrating cultural diversity. I'm so, so excited this morning and I cannot wait to really have this meeting uh, this morning. And did you know in Uganda, we have a great cultural diversity from east to west, north to south. It's all different everywhere you go. It's different food, different traditional dances. We have different attires as you may have seen. I'm wearing something different, Faith. Our Toastmasters is on something different, Alex. So it is all very, very diverse and uh, indeed quite exciting. Some of the things, for example, we name according to the time when you are born, uh, the time of the day, the season, and all our surnames actually have meanings. Like my name, Awori, it means a girl born at night. So it's that exciting here in Uganda, very diverse. You can't even know what your neighbor is speaking because they have a different language. So it's quite exciting and I cannot wait to hear the other side of India as well, as we continue to exchange this morning. I would like to um, now invite our, my, my counterpart, the president of uh, JP Morgan Chase to give a few remarks before I can invite Faith Amaro, our toast of this morning, to take us through the program. Nikita, I hand it over to you. Just Thank you so much. One minute. Thank you so much, Toastmaster, and for that wonderful welcome and introduction to Uganda. India equally is a very diverse country. I have my roots back in Pakistan, born and brought up in a state in northern India and living in a state within South India. So we have complete diversity and people joining from different corners of the country. I welcome all of you again to this joint meeting between JP Morgan Chase and Kampala Sunrise Toastmasters Club. I have been at Kampala before as a role player and it feels great to be back again, especially for a joint meeting. There's one person I want to particularly thank, my partner in crime for this meeting. I posted a message in one of the WhatsApp group, who's ready to have a joint meeting. And this was the first person to ping me back and saying, yes, let's do it. And he set the ball rolling right that moment a month ago. So thank you so much Toastmaster Agaba for putting everything together and bringing this to fruition. Round of applause for you and my heartfelt thank you. I'm sure each one of you are as excited as I am for this meeting and I'm looking forward to it. Our captain for the plane today, the flight today, Toastmaster Faith. Um, I'll have a spiced tea with... Um... Can you please mute yourself? That's okay. Our Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Faith, is all set to set the plane rocking, not literally though, but yes, she's going to set the meeting on fire. So I hand it back to, our, to my counterpart, Toastmaster Annie, to welcome Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Faith. Over to you, Anne. Thank you so much, Nikita. Namaste, Mwasuze Mutia. We are now going to start this meeting this morning. Our Toastmaster of the day is Faith Amaro. And Faith is the Vice President Membership for Kampala Sunrise. Does anyone know what Faith's name means, Amaro? Faith's name, Amaro, means love. I told you that all our names have beautiful meanings to them. So Amaro means love. So next time you could call her love. And right now, I would like to invite Faith to take us through this exciting theme today, celebrate our cultural diversity. Faith Amaro, please take us through the program and the theme of the day. We are ready. Let's welcome Faith, please. Faith Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome aboard flight 4B7 with service from Kampala Sunrise 
to JP Morgan Chase. This is your captain, Faith Amaro. We are currently first in line for takeoff and are expected to be in the air in approximately 10 minutes. Please check to ensure that your personal electronic devices, including laptops and cell phones are properly charged to last the full length of the flight. Today's flight presents an opportunity to celebrate cultural diversity. We have passengers on board, not only from Kampala, India, Kenya, the US, but from different other countries. By the end of this flight, I can guarantee you that you will have learned something new about the culture of the different passengers on board. You will also get an opportunity to identify one passenger whose dress best symbolizes the uniqueness of their culture. I am clad in a Gomesi, and if you look around for those whose videos are turned on, you will get to see different cultural dress across the different nations. We expect to cruise at an altitude of 33,000 feet above sea level. Did you know that Kampala is known for its many rolling hills, which reach an altitude of up to 4,000 feet? It is reported that Kampala is, the is one of the fastest growing cities in Africa. Surprisingly, it has been ranked as one of East Africa's best cities to live in, ahead of Nairobi, Diana, you would be surprised, and even Kigali. The time now is 8.19 a.m. The weather looks good. And with the tile wind as we expect, we shall land in India approximately five minutes ahead of schedule. The weather in Hyderabad is clear and sunny with a high of 25 degrees this morning. If the weather cooperates, we should get a great view of the city as we descend. This city is also known as the city of pearls. It was once the only global center for trade of large diamonds, emeralds, and natural pearls. Hyderabad was voted the second best place in the world to visit very recently. Toastmasters, guests, Rotarians, I have a very competent, highly skilled cabin crew who will support me in ensuring that you have a pleasant flight this morning. On behalf of the crew, I ask that you please direct your attention to the screens in front of you as I invite them in turn to explain their roles. Our first cabin crew member is Akash. Akash, please, if you could unmute, would you tell us your role on today's flight? Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity, uh, Faith Amaru. Thank you to Nikita, especially. Uh, she's the one who messaged me in WhatsApp and asked me. Am I available or can I be the timer for the day? So the surprising fact about me is this is the first time I'm being a timer in a Toastmaster meeting. So I hope I make it big today and I don't embarrass anyone, especially Nikita. So my name is Akash Kumar. I am from Fintry Toastmasters Club and I will be the timer for today. So as a timer, I will, so as it, it is said, I am in tide waits for none. So I won't be waiting for anyone. Please be alert and speak as per your timing. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, Akash. Our second cabin crew member is our grammarian, Saptashi. Saptashi, if you would unmute, please let us know what your role will be on today's flight. Thank you, everyone, uh, for allowing me to be a crew member for, for this flight. Being a grammarian, uh, it is my responsibility to pay close attention to all speakers listen carefully to their language usage. I take note of any misuses of the English language and uh, I'll just uh, acknowledge if there is some uh, word used or any quote sayings or thoughts. As a grammarian, it is also my duty to introduce the word of the day. So today, word of the day is tutelary. Uh, tutelary uh, meaning is having the guardianship of a person or a thing. For an example, uh, I have uh, quoted it in the group also, ancient Indian kings revered certain gods as tutelary deities. And I'll introduce the idiom of the day. Uh, 
uh, it will it is more in the power, meaning something very easy to do example we of think the example will work in the work particularly of phoenix software and all the very best for this journey over to rose master thank you saptashi i will request that you post the word of the day and its meaning in the chat for those who were unable to hear you because of their network as well as the idiom of the day just to reemphasize the word of the day is to tellery and the idiom of the day is walk in the park is a walk in the park thank you very much our third cabin crew member is always always please if you would unmute please let us know what your role will be on today's flight hello everyone today i'll be playing the role of table top topic master and i will have some interesting topics for you up at the end of this segment uh, so wait for that excellent hello i ask back to you. that you please back to you. sorry always are you continuing to make a submission sorry I am the table Always topic master you. for today. That's what I said. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. We look forward to the table topic session. For those who have not attended a Toastmaster meeting, please just watch the space. It is one of the most exciting sessions of today's meeting. I will ask now if you could all please fasten your seat belts and keep your seats in an upright position for takeoff. Cabin crew. prepare for take off ladies and gentlemen today's education moment is a speech project and a level 4 project 1 kampala sunrise has grown by leaps and bounds under alex agaba's tutelary eye alex is a trailblazer and surprisingly a duo member not only of kampala sunrise but jackpot toastmasters in las vegas He has flown the Toastmaster flag high and makes this journey look like a walk in the park. He is in fact the brain be behind today's joint meeting with JP Morgan Chase like Nikita alluded to earlier. Anyone who has crossed paths with Alex can attest to his passion for Toastmasters and the tangible results from interacting with seasoned speakers. who have indeed built his self confidence and personal growth this ladies and gentlemen is the reason why toastmasters exists alex if you may unmute uganda is said to be the source of river nile imagine you were invited to go on a cruise down the river nile could you highlight in 30 seconds to 1 minute what your expectations of this cruise would be for our passengers from india and anywhere else in the world who have not experienced the beauty of river nile wow thank you pay the river nile the river nile the first thing i think about are the waterfall because that nile has a, a dam and that would be a very bumpy ride because you would have to really hold on to something to cut across by even by even travel along the river nile but yeah it's fresh water and very fast rapid waterfalls my experience would be quite bumpy on that in that river lovely thank you alex and you forgot to mention that tasty fish from the river nile that is one of the things i look forward to So dear passengers Alex Agaba's speech is under the innovative planning path well come with me Alex Agaba digitizing Kampala sunrise digitizing Kampala sunrise Alex Agaba Just masters and guests welcome to Kampala sunrise my simple role today is to tell you my project for level 4 when i was looking through this project i was required to come up with something for my team 
and develop something over time and are like, charity begins at home. Why not create something for my club in my role as a public relations? You can wait for Pizza for Kampala Sunrise. And this project is inspired by my travels along Toastmasters. I traveled recently during lockdown to a club that had a website. And I found it so cool. Those guys communicate using one simple tool, the website. Yet for us in Kampala, most of our communication is on WhatsApp. Most of we are, are here because we saw our WhatsApp checks. But you know WhatsApp is very fragile. You lose your phone, you lose it. So many messages, so much noise. How about we had a website where everything is central and is, st is stored and archived properly? So here is the idea I borrowed. A club is jackpot stickers and they have a website. Can I get a screenshot of their website? If I can just take you to the screenshot, they have a menu on the left which has meeting information, contact us information, member information, a club calendar, public downloads, free resources, everything about their club, what happens is stored on the central website. So my project is simple, digitizing Kampala Sunrise, is to create a website for the club. And guess what? I am not doing this alone. I have a team. And what better team to pick than the club officers of the club? As you know, the club officers all serve different roles and I will tap into their massive, massive resources to help achieve this project in a very strict timeline. The first person on my team is our dear president. The president will be in charge of applying for this website because guess what? Toastmasters International provides a free website for every club. But why aren't clubs taking this up? Maybe they're not aware. So our dear president is going to write Toastmasters and they'll provide for us free hosting services. And the next person is the vice president education. Vice president education is going to help put agendas for meetings. So through the agendas, the agendas will be uploaded onto the website and members will sign up for roles without even looking for the VPE. They will just simply click a role they want to take the following meeting and they will confirm the role. It's called a, a self-service system. So it takes away a lot of administration from the club officers. Then we cannot do without Agnes Katshavia, who is the club treasurer. How do you know which members are eligible to be on the website, the club treasurer will remind members of renewals and the club treasurer will receive payment from new members and he will give them a green light to be added onto the website by guests. Brenda Trini is our SAA and she's, she's the one in charge of our guest book. So she knows who our members are and our guests, yes. The guests will have a slot on the website, and that's how we shall be in touch with them for every to invite them for other meetings to come. I also included Emmanuel onto my team. Emmanuel will work closely with me, the PR, to make sure the content on the website is right and relevant. That's the plan to smarter than guests. What is the timeline? I'm working with a timeline of one week. So next Saturday, I'll be back here to present to you a website that's finished. What's my budget? My budget is zero because I'm counting on the executive members to volunteer at that time. You won't be paid. And Postmaster is giving us a free posting service. Thank you. Back to you, Postmaster of the day. Thank you, Alex Agaba. We look forward to the Kampala Sunrise website and for the different clubs even on this platform to model it 
and borrow what you are doing so that we grow together in this digital age. Ladies and gentlemen, we are cruising at an altitude of 20,000 feet and an airspeed of 400 miles per hour. With the cabin cruise to Tellary prowess, I ask that you sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. The in-flight movies will begin shortly. At the end of each movie, we will adopt the round-robin evaluation style and afford members and guests the opportunity to give feedback and evaluation to each movie director. If you would like to evaluate a movie director, please post your name in the chat as they give us an update on their movie. An opportunity will be granted to at least two evaluators per movie after the main evaluator has made their submission. Ladies and gentlemen, the first movie titled The Silent Giant is directed by Moses Rutahigwa, a gallant member of Kampala Sunrise. In just a few months from joining Kampala Sunrise, Moses went on ahead not just to represent the club at club level, but at the area and at the district level in the Toastmaster competitions. He is a force to be reckoned with. Moses will be evaluated by Bunny all the way from JP Morgan Chase. Bunny, in a few words, please share with the passengers on this flight what the Diwali festival is and why it is celebrated in India. Thereafter, please go on to formally invite Moses and highlight what his speech objectives are. Over to you, Bunny. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmasters Faith. And um, Moses, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be an evaluator today for the day for speech one. And uh, the, I'm very curious to know what the silent giant is all about, because it sounds um, very catchy. And a few tips I would like to yeah. mention here, Moses, is you have a catchy topic. And all I would like to say is, I'm sure you have a storyline, but as and when you're taking the storyline ahead, uh, try to have a smooth transition between one topic to another, right? and have a proper introduction, the body, and also when we are talking about the conclusion of the speech, uh, try to you know, leave a message to the audience. And I'm sure you'll, it's going to be a walk in the park for you. So all the best and do well. Thank you, over to you, Toastmaster Faith. Thank you, Bunny. Before Moses comes on, would you like to give us an insight into the Diwali festival and why it is celebrated in India for those who have not experienced it before? Sure, I'll be pleased to. Okay, so Diwali is uh, one of the biggest festivals in India. We have a number of festivals here, but Diwali, yes. It's a, a festival of lights. So we burn a lot of crackers and uh, apart from that, a uh, long time back, we had a king called Rama, and he's considered a god in India. And uh, he fought against evil, and that's uh, Ravana. So it is a, a, a triumph of good over evil. So that's when we celebrate Diwali. And uh, there's a lot of, that's when all the family members get together, and it's a big, big festival for everybody to celebrate gift each other, um, small little things or big things and uh, celebrate it with total lights. So that's the beauty of Diwali. And I'm pleased to share this with all of you. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, Bunny, for reminding us that we need to celebrate the triumph of good over evil in whatever situations we have. And, and it's relatable and it's something that I believe is beautiful even in the different cultures and can be adapted. So dear passengers, our first movie, The Silent Giant, Moses Rutahigwa. Moses Rutahigwa, The Silent Giant. It's known as the last scientific mystery yet to be fully solved. Scientists have spent immeasurable time and I think massive revelation, but none has fully comprehended this one. Yet, it's a very important part of our life, 
and no one can survive without getting seven to nine hours of it consistently. After massive hours of research, over 20 years, Matthew Walker concluded that no matter what element you have in your body, sleep is that one tool you have in a box to help see you through. Sleep is the elixir of life. It's a Swiss knife I, I, I mean, that you have as a person. And sleep is Mother Nature's best shot yet at mortality. Speaking the words of the legendary actor Thomas Decker, sleep is that golden chain that holds your body and health together. Yet, research has shown that one out of every three people you meet do not get enough of it. Research carried out on 1.6 billion people from 70 countries called, and at live in the Northern Hemisphere has revealed that in that particular time when the Northern Hemisphere loses at least one hour of sleep, it has been treated with a 24% increase in heart attack rates compared to 21% when the one hour is gained. And also in that particular time when you lose one hour of sleep, there is an increase in heart attack rates in high, high traffic accidents, including suicide rates. The most shocking one is that in that particular time, you even get harsher sentences passed on by judges because of losing one hour of sleep. So friends, that silent giant is very important. So when you sleep, what happens? You go through two tranches of what you call rapid eye movement and non-rapid eye movement. I know this is science, but it's called REM and non-REM because I'm not a scientist. In the non-REM environment, which is your first phase, normally you go into sleep, slow down and slowly you close your eyes. Your body system goes down, your heartbeat goes down and even your body shuts down. But from nowhere, your brain bursts into activity. It begins to unearth and be able to reveal different experiences in your day and able to give you a measurable benefits. In that particular phase or the non-REM environment, you get two major benefits. The first one, you consolidate the information you have seen in the day and be able to store it in the memory because you receive too much information in the day. But the second one, it helps repair our body immune system that will wake up the next day better and different. In the second phase of sleep, what you call the REM environment, that's the most active part of your brain. Because these two intervals play around, play in your body around 90 minutes of each, there are in the second phase of sleep, you get two major benefits. At that time, your body is fully active, your mind is fully active, and is processing a lot of, a lot of issues with your emotions and thinking and thoughts. It normally gives two major, major benefits. The first one, it acts like an overnight therapy help those over those rough emotions that you've had in the day, so that you wake up the next day better. It's recommended whenever you have a bad challenge, sleep over it, you wake up the next day better. But the second thing it does helps you be able to process the information that was in the day, comparing the information in the past and the ones stored in your memory, be able to reveal to you what comparisons we have. That is why major decisions, major revelations are unearthed in the morning. However, very few of us receive enough of it. Fellow Toastmasters, Rotarians, and guests, allow me to share with you four things we can do to improve our sleep environment. The first one is being able to receive enough large natural light versus artificial light. Most of our offices, our corporate offices, and our homes are filled with too much lighting that's not natural. Yet, our eyes receive and communicate to our brain when it's time to sleep, when we receive a natural light. Therefore, if you go to an office and come back home in the evening and you're on gadgets the whole day, what happens? You're giving your eyes non-natural light, yet it's a very important part of your body. So what do you do? Slow down, open your blinds, get enough natural light, and you will be able to see it well. The second one is what we call social jet lag. In the week, what do we do? Go to bed early, wake up early. In the weekend, add a little more on your head to sleep. Do you know what happens? We have built a pattern of first five, five, five days of active, active sleep early, and then two active nights, two nights in the, week, in the weekend of sleeping later. On Sunday night, you try to reverse the clock, and on Monday, you're more tired than how you began the weekend. Why? Because you're building two different cycles. 
why don't we have a pattern of sleeping at any particular time? And that's what we use throughout the day. The third one is reducing the intake of caffeine and alcohol. I know that's a very emotive subject, but can I share with you something very important that about caffeine, when you take a cup of coffee, the such how the 50% of that caffeine goes out of your body within the first six hours, but the remaining 50% goes out in intervals of three hours each. So a cup of coffee taken at midday will fully go out of your body at midnight because 25% of it takes 10 to 12 hours to go out of your body. So imagine a cup of coffee taken at 3 p.m. goes fully out of your brain at 3 a.m. in the morning. Wow. No wonder at times the cup of coffee in the evening doesn't make you sleep well. Have you ever wondered why? Because you sleep with the caffeine in your body. So take it early and ensure that you're able to have a good sleep. The final one, Serial Toast Masters, is being able to regulate and understand what cycle you sleep in. Are you an early riser or a late night sleeper? Whatever you do, get one cycle, stick to it. If you're an early riser, sleep early, wake up early. If you're a late, late, late sleeper, sleep late. Rise up, rise up late. Why? Consistency is very important. Some of, this, some of this is from genetics. You find when your father used to sleep or mother used to sleep early and wake up early, even the son does the same. Friends, Toastmasters and guests, please don't forget the silent giant. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Lovely, very, very well delivered. Congratulations, Moses. You did justice to this speech and what great takeaways in order for us to make the most of sleep and draw from it as the silent giant in our lives. At this point, like I had alluded to earlier, we will do the round robin evaluation. We will begin with Moses's main evaluator, Bunny. And I know it's off the cuff. The beauty with round robin is it helps you improve your listening skills. So Bunny in two to three minutes will provide an evaluation of Moses's speech. I see a few people have posted on the chat page and they would like to provide feedback as well. So I'll invite some of them after Bunny has provided her comments and then thereafter we'll move on to our next speech slash movie. Over to you Bunny. Thank you Toastmaster Faith and thank you so much Moses for letting us know what the silent, silent giant really means. Firstly, I would like to say that Moses, I mean, it made it, the entire speech sounded like it's a walk in the park for him. Okay, it was that simple and so beautifully done in terms of transition from one topic to another. And also when you look at it, the way he started off a speech saying that sleep is like a Swiss knife. It is mother's nature. You know, that was a fantastic introduction which got the audience wanting to hear more. So you kind of uh, took control of the audience. You did a lot of research in terms of giving us numbers of how much percentage of people actually lack sleep and how would they go about improving it. And I think the transition about Talking, you, you didn't really give that silent giant right at the beginning of the speech. You gave in a lot of introduction and then said that silent giant is important. So that again had a solid impact on all of us. And I would say like you went ahead, had a transition saying the benefits of sleep. And also you spoke about the major benefits of the first phase and the second phase. Uh, so again, one after the other, which was good. And also you came up with remedies like coffee and when is the right time to have coffee. And of course, when we look at the conclusion, you spoke about why things happen and also spoke about even the sun does the same. So why don't we do the same? Now, uh, that was a fantastic speech overall and maybe you know, uh, to add a little punch or a little, um, uh, make it even more interesting, I think you could have given some live examples of people and also maybe used um, the word of the day and uh, the phrase. It would have 
you know, uh, impacted even more. Overall, I would say this was a fantastic speech and not much to say about it. Thank you for sharing and it was insightful. Thank you. Over to you, Toastmaster Faith. Excellent evaluation. Thank you, Bunny. And from your evaluation, we can all appreciate you listened actively and were able to draw and provide relevant feedback to Moses. A few people have asked to provide feedback to you in the chat, Moses. I will ask Edith to go first and thereafter Akash, Nikita and Grace. I will request that we use one to two minutes each. Edith, kindly unmute and go first. If Edith is not ready, can we move to the next person, Akash? Or oh, you're doubling as the timer? Yes, uh, DM Faith. Did you want to I'll provide an evaluation to Moses? I see your name in the chat. Yes, I'm ready for it. Okay, so please thank you for the on. opportunity, DM Faith. Thank you for the opportunity, Toastmaster Faith. The speech given by Moses was really good. And especially I love the topic about sleep. So currently I'm reading a book by an author. So in that he has spoke many good things about uh, sleep. So as Moses was telling about the REM and non-REM, as well as he had put some wonderful points, like pointers specifically about sleep and having consistency. I really loved it. It was an overall great speech. Well then Moses, over to you. Toastmaster Faith. Thank you, Akash, and well on. You are multitasking, doing the timer role, but also able to provide an evaluation. We need to be like you. I'll ask Agnes to provide her evaluation. Sorry, I had skipped your name. Agnes, Nikita, and Grace in that order, and we'll go on to the next speech. All right, thank you, Toastmaster Faith. And Moses, for your speech, I was blown away by it and I'll try not to repeat what our previous evaluators have already mentioned. One of the things that which has been used, the sources that you cited and then you mentioned the consequences. If you don't get enough sleep, I was really convinced then I liked the vocal variety. I noticed when you were explaining the rim, like how you need to go to sleep, how you, you know, like it was like that sleep mode. And then so you say, you say, but from nowhere, and then you went mm -hmm. high up. I thought that was brilliant. The gestures were also spot on, considering the speeches that have been um, watching from you you talked of that being active and then the soothing that you talked about you use great gestures for those and so many other instances in the speech i liked the takeaways as well but someone has already mentioned that i wondered what the speech would have been like if you gave some examples from your personal experience other than that, overall, well done, Moses. I look forward to your next speech. Thank you, Agnes. Lovely evaluation. Nikita, are you ready? Sure, Toastmaster Faith. Well, somebody in the meeting was asking to know more about Toastmasters, and that's why I had put my number in the chat. And that's why the message. But I nevertheless don't mind giving feedback to Toastmaster Mo Moses. It was a wonderful speech and well-researched speech, I would say, Toastmaster Moses. It was a pleasure listening to you. I particularly loved the way you were able to utilize the entire screen with your hand gestures and your screen movements. So kudos to you on that. I have only one suggestion in addition to the other suggestions that you got from other evaluators. 
I wanted to know what motivated you to pick up this particular topic for research. I know it's a very heavy topic to talk about and people all over the world struggle or compromise on their sleep. So what was your reason to pick up this particular topic to research is what I was something I was uh, intrigued to know. That's all from me and back to Toastmaster Faith. Thank you, Nikita. Grace, would you like to wrap up this round bob evaluation with your comments to Moses? Absolutely, Madam Toastmaster. Moses, your smiling face and your sharp dressing complemented your message. When somebody looks at you, they want to know why and how you look this good. And then you talked about sleep. You will be so compelling to the audience. Congratulations. Your information about 12 hours for the caffeine to leave the body and the research that has gone into your speech, you've already been told about it, absolutely fantastic. I have one or two areas of developmental feedback. Slow down. You know, when you're telling us that is why major decisions, major revelations are made in the morning. Pause for effect so that we can have time to take that in. When you asked us, can I share with you something important? Pause. Perhaps you might want to cut down the information in your speech so that it gives you time to speak to us and we can assimilate the message because I felt quite rushed throughout your speech. Such a wonderful speech, so much information for us to take in. If only you could slow down a little bit. Apart from that, if you would keep your points to three because people remember threes, things in threes get enough natural light, jet lag, reduce intake of caffeine and probably emphasize those points a bit more. Apart from that fantastic speech and all the best as you go on with your speaking journey. Over to you, Madam Toastmaster. Lovely, what a great way to wrap up round one of our round board evaluations. Moses, congratulations to you. And please keep soaring. We are proud to have you as part of Camp the Sunrise. Our next movie, titled After a While, is directed by Josephine Adon. Josephine's why for joining Toastmasters is to become a proficient speaker and, out, and add the wow factor to her presentations. She will be evaluated today by Nikita, all the way from JP Morgan Chase. Nikita, table topics came early for you. Imagine you were appointed as India's tourism ambassador. In one minute, please share with the passengers on this flight why they need to visit India. Thereafter, please go on to formally invite Josephine and highlight what her speech objectives are. Over to you, Nikita. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Faith, for that exciting table topic that you've given me to be the tourist uh, tourism ambassador. And I would love to play that role. Welcome to my country, India. I am really proud Indian, I would say. And the country is blessed in all the ways, in geography, in culture, in food. When I talk about geography, we have the great Himalayas towards the north. You come a little down, you have the Thai desert. And then you come a little more down, you have the south, southern part of India covered with oceans and beaches. That gives you different variety, a different flavor in terms of the geography. When you talk about culture, beginning from north to south, different cultures, you have Jammu and Kashmir, which has different cuisine, different festivals celebrated. You come to Punjab, you have different festivals uh, like Baisakhi or different seasons that you can see. And then you come a little more south, you have Mumbai or Maharashtra, where again, the festivals are celebrated in different ways. So it's a diverse country and I welcome all of you. Just board the plane and visit India. I would love to host you. <laughs> to come to my evaluation, Toastmaster Josephine today is attempting her level one, uh, level one project two first speech from a pathway which is called presentation mastery. The purpose of this project is for her to present a speech on any topic, receive feedback, and apply the feedback to a second speech. 
the purpose for the member is to present a speech and receive feedback so today whatever feedback she receives she has to apply it to a second speech in the next meeting or whenever for her i wish toastmaster josephine all the best and back to you toastmaster faith thank you toastmaster nikita josephine adong after a while after a while josephine adong Let's invite her with a round of applause. Josephine, kindly unmute. One morning, I woke up to a morning call from my dad. 6 a.m. in the morning, I thought to myself, what's the problem? Immediately, I began to prepare for the worst news. Jose, he said in a rather long tone, do you remember the wedding we attended two months ago of my PSC son? There was no way I could possibly forget this wedding. Everything about that wedding was so spectacular, right from the impressive detail on the invitation card to the lively church ceremony and glamorous reception. But most remarkable was the stunning bride, Ashley. She looked so dazzling in her white sequin gown. I remember thinking to myself, hope I can look just as good as her when the time comes. The sad news was that Ashley had breathed her last the previous night. This was really sad. I later tried to find out what had happened and got to know that Ashley's life had been claimed by an ectopic pregnancy. The first time I came across the word ectopic pregnancy was when I was having a casual conversation with my sister, Dr. Carol. And in, her, in our conversation, she explained that an ectopic pregnancy occurred when the egg implanted itself outside the cavity of the uterus. She further explained that an ectopic pregnancy could present with abdominal pain, pelvic pains, and the most hurting scenario was that it could cause internal bleeding, infection, and at the worst case death, as was the case of Ashley. This was really sad. I had never ever imagined that this could be part of my story. Life has a way of presenting situations without you knowing what is happening next. On the 9th of November 2014, my husband and I woke up in a very jovial mood. This was partly because it was our second wedding anniversary. I was so excited about it and determined to go through the day with lots of joy. As we drove to work, I noted that I was experiencing abdominal pain. And for every pothole that he went through, the pain just kept on intensifying. Amidst all this pain, I was hell-bent on having very good day. I chose not to focus on this day. Later, as the day went through, the pain became so unbearable and I was forced to check into a hospital. Immediately, I saw a doctor. I was asked to do a scan. While in the scanning room, I remember the, the radiographer asking me, do you have any children? By then, our son was one and a half years old. She further asked me, have you come in with, with anybody else? To which my answer was no. Immediately, I got curious of what could be the problem. She then asked me to quickly call somebody as I was not going to be allowed to leave the hospital. My mind got so tense with what could have possibly happened. I quickly called my husband who came in within the shortest possible time. When he got in, my results were handed over to him. You should have seen the manner in which I gripped the results from him. And while I looked at the results, 
The only thing that I read was ectopic pregnancy detected, emergency operation now. I could not imagine I was in the shoes of Ashley. I could not imagine what our second wedding anniversary had turned out to be. Immediately, I was whisked into the operation theater for a procedure that lasted approximately 45 minutes. Thereafter, I began to imagine what exactly Ashley could have gone through. But in this case, I was given a second chance to life. After this experience, I began to imagine what could, it could have been for her or had she been given a chance to live. Life presents us with so many situations. You may be going through painful situations that may not be exactly what I went through, but what have you chosen to focus on? Have you chosen to look at the silver lining in the dark cloud or have you chosen to focus on what is you're going through? We were not able to have children until after a while of five years. After a while of five years, we were blessed with two lovely children. I may not say it was a simple experience, but I can confidently say after a while, our lives got better. After a while, all the pain was no more. After a while, there is so much joy in our family with little children running here and there. Fellow postmasters and guests, what is it that is painful in your life? Are you allowing the situation to take control of you or are you choosing to take it as it is and embrace it and count your blessings as they come? Count your blessings, take that pain as a learning and life will be better after all. Wow. Thank you for sharing such a beautiful story of your life's journey, Josephine, and just walking us through that difficult pregnancy, but also the lessons that you have drawn from it. My takeaway is time heals all things, and we need to learn from the situations that come our way in order to be better, but continually to count our blessings every single day. Nikita, are you ready to present the evaluation to Josephine on her speech? Yeah, sure. May I also mention that after Nikita's evaluation, if you'd like to evaluate Josephine, please put your name in the chat and you'll have an opportunity to do so. Thank you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Faith. I must commend Toastmaster Josephine for sharing her personal story. She is a tutelary of embracing whatever is li whatever life is throwing at her and taking it with courage. I would congratulate Toastmaster Josephine for overcoming all the challenges. Coming to my evaluation, I will first talk about points that I loved about your speech, and then I will give you a few recommendations to take it to the next level. First, I love the way you used very descriptive language to describe the wedding, which was very impressive, glamorous, the bride was dazzling. So I was able to imagine all of that and create those pictures in my mind. Good job done on describing everything in your speech. I also loved how you first set the context of your speech by telling us about the call you received from your dad about the wedding you attended and then came to your personal story. Had you just jumped directly into your personal story, it wouldn't have made the impact your speech was able to make today. The way you narrated your personal story again was great and my heart was beating with your story and listening to it. Good job done on setting the context and then jumping to the story. And the third part I loved about your speech were how your expressions transitioned throughout your speech. When you were talking about the wedding, you were all happy and excited about and surprised about with the extravagance of that wedding. And 
when you came to your story when you were anxious and scared about the results i could feel that anxiousness in your voice and in your expressions so good job done in the expressions part moving on to what you can improve in your speech i was able to get your story and then the movie after it but what happened and how did you overcome the challenges i'm sure it was not a walk in the park for you so how did you overcome those challenges what did you do maybe we could take those lessons and try to apply in our lives when we go through such situations i would love you to put some part of that highlight the challenges and how did you overcome it will bring more value to the audience that you are delivering your speech to overall a great job done you were great in using descriptive language setting the context and then transi transitioning to your personal story great expressions just add how you overcome the challenges and your speech will be more effective to the audience as well as to adding value to everybody i wish you all the very best for your next speeches back to you toastmaster faith thank you toastmaster nikita excellent evaluation of josephine's speech i don't see any names in the chat should i agnes would like to evaluate josephine alex as well president ann angela may i also ask that you do an evaluation your evaluations are excellent so we can start with alex agnes ann and angela in that order thank you thank you faith and most especially thank you josephine wow Toastmaster, me, I love personal stories. So when a speaker comes with a personal story, I am hooked from the beginning to the end. And thank you for sharing your story, Josephine. It's a story that you didn't have to share, but you shared it with us. And personally, yeah, we know you now. And then also, it's, you accepted to give us your story and it was a, a story worth listening to. Without repeating what Nikita said, yeah, I would want to know the, the facial expressions are very good. I like how you used your, your, your face was very clear. You were close to the camera. So we saw your facial expression. You are sad. It's a sad story. We got it. But there's always a happy ending to every story, doesn't it? We didn't see that. Yeah, we know you have a beautiful smile, but however much a sad story, let us see your smile. Let us know that and you live happily ever after. That's, that's, that's what I can contribute to your speech. Lovely. Thank you, Alex. Agnes? Thank you, Faith. And thank you, Josephine, for the gift of your story. Most of what, what I wanted to say has been shared, but there's still something I can share. I loved your grammar hell-bent on having a good day, silver lining in the dark cloud. Those are just a few, but there were quite many in your speech, so keep it up. Then expressions have been talked about. Gestures, this is a point for improvement. There were points in your speech where I thought you had opportunities to use gestures, but I also noticed that the way Okay, I also struggle with this one, camera positioning. So we're in it together. We can support each other, figure out how to do it in such a way that your gestures are seen. Your hands were down, you're trying to do something with them, but I could not quite see it very well. Otherwise, the personal story did it for me. Thank you so much. Over to you, Faith. Thank you, Agnes. President Ann. Thank you so much, Faith, and thank you, Josephine, for that speech. Wow, that was quite fascinating to me. And as you were talking, my heart was beating because it's something very, very relatable. I could relate with it. Thank you for sharing that personal story. I know it's never easy, but uh, you talking about it just got me so emotional and I could relate with it and it ended so well for you. I am so glad that um, you did not have to go through what so many people go through because normally after that, there are chances that somebody could not even get more children, but that was really great. 
I, um, I loved that you could share that uh, very sensitive personal story with, that, with us. And then you did bring it down to how it now ended. And you have children, you're living in a warm house with beautiful smiles. To me, that was really great. And you told us that we should always count our blessings. And just one thing that I thought maybe some people might have not uh, got it, just like myself, when you abbreviated the, the PS's son, did that mean permanent secretary? Or so that, that would be something to tell us in full so that uh, we know exactly what PS is. But overall, Josephine, I am so emotional, I'm overwhelmed with your speech. Thank you for sharing that with us. And I will always remember to count the blessings. Over to you, Toastmaster Faye. Lovely. Thank you, President Anne. Angela? All right, I was just, just unmuting myself then. <laughs> Hi, uh, yeah, yeah, call on me. Yeah. <laughs> Josephine, that was actually a really, it was a really amazing speech. You brought out a lot of emotion. You did just, I mean, as I said, your language was really great. I would like to challenge you with one thing. When you start a speech, bring us in. Ask us a question, because by asking us a question, you are making us really think. A couple of questions I just scribbled down was, don't you wish your life could be better? No, no, sorry, no, wasn't that one. Um, have you had a call you wished could have been better first thing in the morning? I mean, imagine that. You've got us there. You've built us tension. We, now we want to know what's going on. You would then follow up with, well, I got one. Imagine 6 a.m. in the morning, your father calls with this news. What would you do? When you ask those questions, don't forget to bring in the answer right at the end. You could say, although it was a really difficult call, this was how I rose above the challenge. Because when we give speeches, we always do it in full circle. What else did I write? Do you Another great thing that you did during your speech was after a while. You kept saying after a while, after a while, after a while. Do you know who used that in their, in their speeches? Barack Obama. It was, I can't remember what it's called. It's a big speech thing in rhetoric. This is very effective. After a while, this. After a while, that. After a while, that. It's really great to use that. I bet you didn't know that. I was reading it the other day. I cheated. So that's what I would actually add in for you because when you're doing speeches, you actually, you're giving us like a tension moment, like when you were telling us about your operation. And then when you give us the answer, you're bringing us down. So you give us a story, you bring us down. Overall, it was a really great speech. Thank you for giving it. Thank you, Josephine. And thank you to all our evaluators. You have done a brilliant job. For those who took part in the round robin, I see in the chat, they said there's something about the letter A. You are the A team. I applaud you. Very well done. We'll go on to our final movie for this flight, titled Disconnect to Connect. It is directed by Ankita Shama. Some of the fun facts about Ankita include her love for painting. She embraces her inner nerd and her hometown is a valley surrounded by mountains and it's one of her favorite places to be. We are honored to have Diane Wanja, a seasoned Toastmaster and president of the Ali Birds Toastmasters Club in Nairobi, Kenya, to be Ankita's evaluator. Diane, Kenya boasts of the big five African animals that the Ali big game hunters considered the most difficult and dangerous to hunt on foot in Africa. Of the elephant, lion, leopard, buffalo, and rhinoceros, which of those is most endearing to you and why? Thereafter, please go on to formally invite Akita, highlighting what her speech objectives are. Over to you, Diane. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much, Faith, for this opportunity. I'm so excited. It's such a different kind of Toastmasters meeting. So I feel engaged all the way from the start up until this point. So I appreciate both JP Morgan and Kampala Sunrise Toastmasters for the good work that you're doing. I am enthralled. Uh, Kenya, yes, does boast of the big five, and I am the type that loves to go camping a lot. I usually, every two or three months, I go camping in national parks. Yes, it sounds scary. It is the first one or two times that you do it, but after that, it is so exciting. And of course, you have Kenya wildlife guards surrounding you, so you're not in much danger. And I have experienced a lot of animals. I have seen them at really close range many times. So I love them. And I think the one that um, really, I feel it so much, I think is the elephant because they have such deep character. Uh, a while back, uh, we were in a national park and there were usually they walk in herds, uh, in herds, and there were about 30 elephants crossing right in front of our car. And one of them, every time, after every one minute, one of them, the, the matriarch, the leader of the elephants, usually a woman, uh, a female, sorry, would turn around and, and like cause, uh, how can I say, try and chase this one elephant away. And the whole herd would turn around and try and chase it away. So we asked one of the, two, uh, the, the guards or the guides, what is going on here? What's the story here? They, then he told us one of them, the one that is being chased away is actually a teenage male elephant. The reason he's being kicked out is because he's reached of age, he wants to mate, and he started mating with his sisters and brothers and, and everybody in that heard. So he's being kicked out to go and start his own family and look for a female somewhere out of the herd. And there are so many of those kinds of stories. I've seen elephants crying, mourning another elephant. You see the tears. So, and they never forget and they have the perfect sense of smell. So I love, love, love the elephant. And you're most welcome if you want to travel in national parks in Kenya, you're almost welcome to do so. Now, on to the um, introduction of Ankita Sharma's speech. Ankita is attempting her level one project two speech of the presentation mastery path. The purpose of this project is for her to present a speech on any topic while applying feedback from the previous speech. Ankita has sent me her previous speech feedback already, so I will primarily give her feedback on the same and possibly add a little bit of my own new feedback to it. The purpose of this speech is for Ankita to demonstrate that she applied the feedback received from her first speech. The type, oh, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to introduce Ankita's speech or not, but back to you, <laughs> Madam TMOD. Thank you, Diana. Thank you for just drawing us in. I didn't know that much about elephants and it's just brilliant to hear from your experience. So I will introduce Ankita Sharma now to let us in on her movie. Ankita Sharma, Disconnect to Connect. Disconnect to Connect, Ankita Sharma. Thank you, Toastmaster Amaro. First, I would like to check if I am audible. Yes, you are. Please proceed. Okay. Thank you. Isn't it difficult to engage with the world around you when you when you are when your nose is buried on your phone? Think about the last time you had a meaningful conversation with your loved one without a gadget around you. If you cannot remember, then my friend, you are missing out on priceless moments of your life. Fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests, a very good morning. I would like to start with an incident that happened very recently, which kind of made me realize that if we want 
to connect, we need to disconnect first. Last month, I invited two of my friends at my house for dinner, Tom and Jenny. I was meeting them after a very long time and really looking forward to that evening. Three of us met, they reached my house in time. We settled in our couches comfortably sipping coffee. We started sharing anecdotes from each other's lives. As we were talking, some suddenly Tom's cell phone rang. She quickly looked at the number and said, guys, I've got a really important call. Do you mind if I take it? We really did not mind the first time. But then the phone rang, made all sorts of noises, each time calling her attention away from our conversation. Even when it was not ringing, her eyes were fixated on the screen, scrolling Facebook or Instagram. We really did not get to have a proper conversation that day. Ultimately, Jerry and I had like have a had a talk for some time. Three of us had dinner and called it a day. Later that night, I pondered on how our phones and social media are constantly burrowing into our lives. You know, finding sneaky little ways to invade our personal space and family time. And you know what the funny part is? We are not even aware of it. We are so indulged to these short-term means of joys that we have forgotten the real meaning of happiness. <clears throat> even I have faced it. Although I'm not a person who is too much into virtual life um, or you know too much on Instagram and social uh, social networking sites, but during lockdown, I kind of was. I started spending long lost hours on my phone and on my computer, ignoring my family time completely. This went on for several days. In fact, I should say several weeks. <clears throat> Until I realized one fine day that it had not only negatively impacted my health, but also my social skills and my relations. I won't bore you with a long story, but I would like to mention some of the things that I have incorporated after realizing this moment. For instance, now I make sure that I put my phone away when I'm having dinner with my family, my friends. I avoid using phone before bedtime and like after waking up. Just I'm trying to strike a balance. Although I still connect with my friends and family on Facebook and Instagram, I feel it's a nice way to keep up with the friends who live very far away from you. Or at this time when COVID has hit all of us, Zoom has come out as a very good alternative. And I feel it's, it's a nice way to meet new people as well who share the same interests. But as much as I enjoy, my time online, nothing compares. I mean, nothing compared to the face-to-face -face conversation and time with others where we get to bond together, we build relationships. As a conclusion, I would like to say that I'm not suggesting go crazy and uh, get rid of all the technology. I'm just saying that, you know, it's okay to um, stop every now and then. Just enjoy the other aspects of life. Take a deep breath, relax, and take in the abundance of life itself. I hope that it will be a walk in the park for you. As it is said, unplug to unwind, tune out to tune in, and disconnect to connect.
Over to you, Toastmaster Amaro. Wow. Thank you for that challenge. And I'm sure we all fall culprits of connecting so much so that we disconnect. That was very well executed, Ampita. Congratulations. At this point, I will ask Diane to present her evaluation and thereafter we'll get into the round robin. Over to you, Diane. Okay, you can hear me now, right? It was refusing to unmute. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Thank you for this opportunity, Toastmaster Amaro. And Kita Sharma, thank you for reminding us that we need to go back to the basics, to the times before we had so many gadgets around us. I felt it. I felt this speech. I related to it so much because sometimes I struggle with that same thing. So thank you for that. The things that I felt you did really well in, one was how you started your speech. You started by giving us something to think about. You said, think about the last time you had a meaningful conversation without having a gadget around you. And I immediately started thinking of last night, for example, I was with my sister and my daughter. We had gone to my sister's house. We all had gadgets. And on top of that, the TV was on and we were watching a movie at the same time. We're just surrounded by gadgets and that seems so normal. So that got me thinking, I was good. The other thing I enjoyed is that you told us a personal story about your hang up, hang out with two of your friends and how it all went and how the gadgets interrupted that time with your friends. And then you told us what to do afterwards to reduce the use of those gadgets. I like how you ended your speech, unplug to unwind, tune out to tune in, disconnect to connect. You brought back the title. So the structure of your speech was pretty good. I enjoyed it. One of the things from your previous feedback was that you needed to improve on your eye contact. Today, you were looking at us directly. I could, you, your eyes were on the camera. So you definitely apply that feedback. The other feedback you were given was the use of long poses that you needed to reduce that. Well, today I did not feel any unusually long poses. So I think you also, I believe you also applied that feedback. Well, well done. Now, what can we do to make this speech even better? The first thing I felt was the title disconnect to connect the minute i saw the title i kind of already knew or i could easily guess what the speech was going to be about so how about you change the title to make us a bit more curious about what you're going to talk about you know instead of selling your speech already with a title the second thing as much as eye contact was great today we you were looking down at us. It would be great if the camera was raised, you could maybe put books personally, and this is something I, you did not hear me say. If I'm presenting and I, needed, I need to stand, I usually put a stool on top of a table. <laughs> and then that way the camera is at eye contact. That is before I start investing, of course, in a proper stand. So for now we work with what we have. So see if you can put camera at eye level. And last but not least, one of the feedback that you were given was that you needed to practice more because maybe there was a bit of hesitation in your previous speech. This time, I believe the hesitation was less, but it was also clear that sometimes you forgot some words. The good thing is that you went on with grace and flair, like nothing happened, but I could tell that you forgot a few words. So practicing more is something you need to do. Overall, I enjoyed the speech. It was relevant, relatable, and I would encourage you to apply this feedback and then go out there and talk about this to everybody. And I mean everybody in every audience you can possibly do. Back to you, uh, TMOD. And yes, Amaro, thank you. Ali Bides, we are very glad and privileged to have you today. Would anyone else like to evaluate Ankita? I don't see any names in the chat. 
please post your name. Agnes would like to go first. Agnes, please make a start as we have a few others give evaluations. Thank you very much, Faith and Ankita for your speech. Diana has given a great evaluation, comprehensive. Just a few things, just to let you know, Ankita, I really enjoyed your speech, very practical. Uh, it's something for some reason, we know the right thing to do, but we keep doing it anyway, I think for most of us. But I like that you shared your the specific things that you are applying in your life. You said you put the phone away at certain times, or you don't use it before you go to sleep and just after waking up and striking a balance. I think those are very practical things that someone can try and challenge themselves to apply. I, uh, this is something that I think could be a point for improvement. I felt distracted even right now with the lighting, these those lights that I see in your background. So every time you would come, instead of really looking at you and paying attention to you, I kept thinking, oh, there are those lights. There are these lights. And then they, they would bring a certain shadow to your face. So I wonder whether you can position your camera differently, or maybe the, 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 the gadget to face them or a different direction altogether, but I think it will do you well if you consider that. Other than that, I feel like you has covered it all. Good job. Yeah. Thank you, Agnes. I'll ask Alex to go next and provide his evaluation. Thank you, Faith, and well, thank you, Ankita. What a blessing to have you deliver your speech at Kampala Sunrise. Like everyone has said, we're all guilty. Last night, I was on my phone while I was out hanging with people at the end in a whole year, but I was still on my phone, partly because I was also connecting to this meeting, but that's not an excuse to be on phone when you're in public. But everything has been said, but Ankita, I liked your gestures. You had a unique, you have, you had, you had a unique gesture you are doing while you do your hands like this. My first time to see a speaker do it, I saw it. But just as gestures are a very good thing to have, and I could see them, your hands were in, in visible view. But I noticed that you have some movements you make them a lot. You, as you make it yourself, you also move. You move left to right. It it came out to me as a lot of movement. Maybe you might want to check it. Yeah, you might want to check it. But very good speech, and you're turning out to be an excellent speaker. And like Diane said, give your speech on many platforms, not just here. Uh, write a blog, do a YouTube video. Let's hear your message because we are all beautiful disconnecting why we should be connecting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Our final evaluation will come from Judith. Judith, over to you. Judith, would you like to unmute, please? Yes. There you are. Yes, Ankita, that was a great speech. What I've loved that, that uh, the rest of the evaluators have not mentioned, her, her body language was amazing. Every word that she spoke was relating with her body language, and that made the information flow very, very well, so we could connect properly her speech with her body language. And just like Agnes and the rest have said about the camera, I understand I've been there and I'm still equally struggling with it, but I know she's going to make it. I know Ankita, you're going to make it. I'm also struggling. So I'm with you <laughs> in the same struggle, but we need to get there because that's the only way anyway to do it. Otherwise, it, is an, it has been an amazing speech. Thank you so much, Ankita. To you, Tionde.
Thank you, Judith. Thank you, all our evaluators. And most of all, thank you, Ankita, for the takeaways. Unplug to unwind, disconnect to reconnect. These are lessons we carry even after we leave this meeting today. Great job. Ladies and gentlemen, a cabin crew representative, always will be coming around shortly to offer you a light snack and beverage. This will take the form of a table topic, which will present an opportunity for you to practice your impromptu speaking skills. I'll talk to you again before we reach our destination. Welcome, Oasis. Thank you, Toastmaster Faith. Uh, with that, let me start the table topics. Who is who will be the first volunteer? Anyone? You can ping in the chat as well if you are comfortable with that. Linda has raised her hand up. <clears throat> okay. Linda, your topic is where there is a will, there is a way. Where there is a will, there is a way. Linda. Friends, where there is a will, there is a way. Many a time, most of us want to do something, but because of negative energy or the fear factor or coming up with so many excuses, we always hesitate to fulfill some of our dreams or to do the things that we want to do. When we listen to a number of people, they will share with us 10 different ways of how what we want to do is not possible. Over 14 years ago, I wanted to water raft on the River Nile. And the day before I was to raft, someone had perished in the waters of River Nile, never to be seen again. And before that, so many people had told me, Linda, the River Nile is so fast. It is dangerous. This is Africa. There are no rescue teams. There are so many stories. But I said, I will go in. And I'm not a powerful swimmer anyway. But I wanted to tick off that bucket list item. And so what I did, I shared with the instructor, the person we we're going with. And I told them, I want to be able to have a full day raft, rafting experience on the River Nile. And lo and behold, there was a safety boat, a type of boat that does not overturn on the River Nile, but still gives you a very exhilarating experience as you raft on the River Nile, the longest river in the world. So friends, if you want to do something, there is always a way. Where there is a will, there is a way. Do not give up on your dreams. Table Topics Master. Thank you, Toastmaster Linda. So requesting other participants to raise their hand. Where there is a will, there is a way. Remember that. Who's next? Anyone? Pastor guys, or I can just call people out. I'll go. Bernie. Bernie. Okay, Bernie, the topic for you is as you sow, so shall you reap. As you sow, so shall you reap, Toastmaster Bernie. Well, thank you. And uh, as you sow, so shall you reap. That's a very famous saying, and I truly, truly believe in it. Okay, when I talk about sowing, it's not only about sowing a seed to get plants. No. It also talks about your deeds, you know, you, what you do in your life. Like say, if you are nice with people, you may not see results immediately that people would appreciate you or give you a pat on the back. No, it's, it's like gradually you would see that when you're sowing these small little seeds of emotions, love, empathy, you tend to reap them in the future you tend to reap these small little deeds in the future. Like people will look up at you. People take you as an example. 
people change looking at you and also likewise if you see people if you if you think sowing the wrong seed in the wrong uh, time and in the wrong uh, season would not reap to the right plant or you would not uh, get the right uh, outcome so also when you sow your seeds uh, in terms of values beliefs in life it's important that you also be ready for what you reap so be good my dear friends because remember as you sow so shall you reap thank you thank you toastmaster bernie that was really an interesting insight and i truly believe in that too anyone who will go next raise your hand i see ankita's hand was up okay ankita sure. ankita your topic is beauty lies in the eyes of beholder beauty lies in the eyes of beholder ankita thank you toastmaster wise such a beautiful topic <laughs> um beauty lies in the eyes of beholder that is something i think we all can relate to we see mountains we see beaches and we love them we see a small kid we love them i feel that um, whatever we have the perception of our surroundings that is what we see in front of our eyes so if we are thinking that something is beautiful uh, not just how it looks but something uh, if we talk about a person uh, if that person is kind and you know very inspiring we just look up to that person and see yeah that is the beauty of that that person so um, if i am looking at somebody um, pro- probably it's the beauty in my eyes that i am uh, kind of uh, appreciating the wonderfulness the amazingness in that person or it applies to each aspect of our life be it a thing or a place or people so i completely agree and in fact believe in it that beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder thank you toastmaster always over to you thank you toastmaster ankita and thank you all the beautiful people for attending the stable topic session today in the interest of the time i'll hand over uh the stage packed to toastmaster of the day toastmaster faith over to you thank you toastmaster always and thank you to each of you who took part in the table topics session at this point i will ask that we pause and vote for our better speaker we had three speakers for the prepared speeches moses ritahigwa josephine nadong and ankita shama the poll will be coming up on your screens shortly Once you receive it please do vote for the better speaker. We'll have 30 seconds for that. Okay, I see we are voting, counting down. We have about 10 seconds to go. Thank you Diane, best speaker. since there are more than two that's why we have presidents like you in this club <laughs> today lovely so immediately after voting for the best speaker we will vote for the best table topics participant we had three linda bunny and ankita so the poll for the table topics will come up shortly please do take a moment to vote for the best table topics participant The first was Linda, the second was Bunny and the third was Ankita. So ignore four and five and vote between one, two and three. Okay, I see you're voting. We'll give it a few more seconds. 
Please do vote. The poll is up on your screen. The first, Linda, the second, Bunny, and the third, Ankita. Excellent. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the crew, I now ask that you direct your attention to your screens as we obtain an update in one to two minutes on an exciting book written by one of our very own members, Linda Navayinda. Linda has just given us a table topic on where there is a will, telling us about her experience with water rafting. Linda has recently published a book titled Breakthrough Success, which focuses on overcoming every limitation. Linda, could you give us a brief snippet into your book? Wow. Thank you. My heart is filled with gratitude for being given these two minutes to share about the book that I have written and published and to do it in such a fora where we have uh, different nationalities, people of different nationalities and different clubs present, JPMC club and uh, Ali Bad representative. Thank you, President, for this opportunity. The book is called Breakthrough Success and it covers time-saving essential techniques, practical, that everyday people face in their life, trying to juggle career, businesses, side hustles, children, fun, and all that, and overcoming all the barriers and limitations out there that prevent many of us from achieving our dreams or achieving our successes. In the book, I share a personal story and how the lessons I learned from that story helped me turn my life around and be able to achieve multiple, multiple things that have made me successful in my own way of life. So we'll be having a book launch next week, a virtual launch on Thursday, 25th of March, 7 p.m. is African time and you're all invited to witness this milestone. If I may ask, how many of us have a dream of writing a book? Okay, now how many of us have a dream of writing and publishing a book? Good, where there's a will, there's a way. And I thank COVID-19 for this because I was able to utilize my time working from home to put pain to paper and also be able to get my book out there. And most importantly, it features other international best-selling authors. Isn't that awesome? So please save the date, Thursday, 25th March, 7 p.m. Attend my book launch. And I will just ask three things of you, my fellow Toastmasters, that in addition to saving the date, you pass around the flyer that will be on our WhatsApp group to all your networks so we can all enjoy and benefit from this launch. There'll be lots of goodies and lots of online games. It's going to be a wonderful evening. Thank you, President, once again, for giving me this opportunity to share briefly about my book and how the rest of us can benefit from the lessons that I share in the book. Over to you, Toastmaster. Wow, you are undoubtedly leading the way. Congratulations, Linda. We are very proud to be associated and we'll circulate the link with the different attendees of today's meeting. Thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seats are in full upright position. Make sure your seat belt is securely fastened and all your carry-on luggage is either stored under your seat or in the overhead bins. The cabin crew will provide an update at this point on our interactions during the flight. Very quickly, our grammarian and our timer will provide their reports. We'll begin with Akash, and then we'll go to Nikita, who will step in for our grammarian. Cabin crew, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, TMOD Faith. 
it was a great meeting all the speeches were really good as being a timer i have noted the timings for all the speeches so the main three speakers were moses who spoke about uh, moses josephine and ankita all three of them have qualified the evaluators were bernie nikita and dian in the in the evaluation part bernie and nikita have qualified dian has not qualified but as evaluation was really good really good he was explaining every part is really good based on the table topics the main three participants were uh, linda bernie and ankita all three of them have qualified thank you so much over to you tmod fake thank you akash excellent job nikita would you like to give us your report on the grammarian slash account role thank you faith i have only the report for grammarian and i will highlight only the good usages of the words and phrases today some of the notable words that were used were impeccable outgrow jet lag triumph extravagant perished lo and behold fear factor the phrases that used were executed in such a flair sleep is like a swiss knife which is a simile unplug unwind disconnect which are triads and fear factor which is again a dual word of the day were used by amaro myself and bernie and idiom of the day was used twice by bernie once by me and amaro as well that is in short the grammarian report I really enjoyed the meeting, and I loved how you conducted the meeting. Faith, I I felt as if I'm on a flight to Uganda, and I wish to really on board a flight and come down there. Back to you, Faith. Lovely. Thank you, our excellent cabin crew, ladies and gentlemen. We have arrived at JP Morgan Chase Hyderabad. The local time is. 9:54 a.m. and the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. I hope you have learned something new about the Indian and East African culture on today's flight. At this point, may I ask that we all turn our videos and in one minute vote in the chat one passenger whose dress we believe best symbolizes the uniqueness of their culture. Can we turn on our videos and just post a name in the chat? of one passenger on this flight who we believe their dress symbolizes their culture we highlighted today is a celebration of cultural diversity i see a number of people's videos are off for those who can turn them on please do and vote Okay, as the names are coming through, on behalf of the entire crew, I would like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we look forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a great weekend, and I'll hand over at this point to Madam President, who will wrap up and also highlight the results from the chat. Over to you, President Ann. Thank you, Faith. You. Thank you so much, Faith, for steering the meeting so well. I am waiting for Alex to send me the latest results on who is the best dressed culturally this morning. This has been an amazing meeting. We had a spice of India and a taste of Uganda. It's been so wonderful. Faith and your cabin crew, you steered this meeting so graciously. And um, I never wanted it to end, but we have a timeline. It has to end. All good things come to an end. And indeed, we shall close the meeting very soon. But before I do that, I would like to recognize the best speaker of the day for the prepared speeches. The best speaker is Ramrods Moses Rutahigwa. Moses, well done. 
And for the table topics, the best speaker this morning, the movie director is Bunny. Well done, Bunny. Then our next uh, meeting will be next Saturday, March the 27th. And it will be the same time, same place. So please do join us again for that amazing event. Uh, before I close this meeting and announce the best dressed, I would like to invite our um, treasurer Agnes Katsave, Katsave to take us through the renewal process because time is up. Kampala Sunrisers, we need to pay. So Agnes, please let us know what we need to do so that we can get the DCP goals. Agnes, over awesome. to you. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you very much, Madam President and Aori. I want to start off by appreciating every single person that has paid their membership dues. And we are six of us. I missed out one of us when I communicated on WhatsApp, but I will be calling you later on. Uh, we are on a mission, members. We have an award to win. We have five days for us to make 25 paid up members. And you know how much we are getting? We are getting an award worth $50 for our club. So this is a call for all of us. Let's work towards making sure that we're our style, you know, sunrise style. We can do this. In case you're wondering, how do I make the payments? I will be posting this again. Uh, but we have the DFCU bank account as well as mobile money where you can send it and we will submit to Toastmasters International. I was thinking here in case you have questions for club members, maybe we could do a breakout room. But only if you raise your hand, maybe the SAA can help us. We have a breakout room. You ask questions for about 10 minutes and we close that chapter. So, is there anyone that might want some clarity? You have questions. Can someone confirm that? There are no hands, so I think you're very clear in your presentation. Hello, I went off. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes it's clear, Agnes. Yes, I was just saying if there's anyone that has questions, club members, please, I, we could do a breakout room, but we could do that if you raise your hand and I know there are some, and once I know that there are people who need clarity, then we can go to the breakout room. Is there anyone? Okay, so looks to me like members have the information and it's clear, however, you feel free to still call me or any of the EXCO members and we'll be happy to provide the information that you need. Thank you and over to you, Madam President. Thank you so much, Agnes, for that great reminder. Sunrisers, let us make magic because that is what we are known for. Let us not miss this opportunity. I would like to once again thank each and everyone that has joined us this morning from all over the play, all over the world. All of you, we do appreciate you. Please keep visiting Kampala Sunrise. We shall also visit your clubs. And uh, great congratulations to Linda once again. Linda, thank you. And thank you for the link. Please let's join on Thursday and see Linda as she 
marks this milestone. Congratulations and all the best on that day, Linda. We have come to the end of our meeting, but as always, we like to sit down and uh, have a chat with you, bring your cup of tea, your breakfast, and the day is just starting for us. Let us chat. If you would like to join Kampala Sunrise, Please let us know. We have guests who have been here for so long. I think they should be members. So we shall wait for you. And have a great weekend, each and everyone. Faith, you have been the best dressed before, just before I close the meeting, I had forgotten. Let us <laughs> applaud oh. Faith. She's the best dressed person this morning. Thank you, Faith. Thank you. Congratulations, Faith. You take Thank it, you that Gomesi was shining, was beautiful, it was so good on you. The colors are amazing on you. Congratulations. And thank you to each of you for a very a lovely weekend. weekend. Thank you, Faith, you did so great. Thank you, our team, JP Morgan Chess. <laughs> Great job. So glad to have you. We need to do this more often. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. It, it was amazing start to the weekend, I should say. And thank you so much, Agaba, Faith, and everybody who joined from Kampala Sunrise Toastmasters Club. Let's have our videos on and we take a picture. Let's have our videos on and probably smile or wave. Show some just hands. Siba Bulanji. Siba Bulanji. Now, one, two, three, go. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Always glad to have you. Brilliant, Joe. Thank, thank you all thank for you. your And to our role takers, you were excellent. Great, Joe. Good job. Yeah. Amazing the job today. Takers. The flight was an amazing one. <laughs> Great. Yeah, Faith, what, the way you put it together was fantastic. I mean, I felt like I really was on a flight. I had to look outside and think, where am I? Am I in my sitting room or where am I? <laughs> well done. That was really great. It's amazing. The things, the things we are doing on Zoom today are quite amazing. So it never ceases to amaze me when you think like breakout rooms then you're in a room with some people and suddenly before you know it you're back in the main room i just it just is just amazing i mean i don't have it here like you can have the different backgrounds i don't know how to do that because <laughs> i very seldom zoom on my computer i normally do it on my phone um because i don't have signal throughout the flat i've only got mm -hmm. signal on my computer in this room um, but you just think what, what we're achieving. I mean, if just think, if it wasn't for this, I could never come to Kampala. Yeah, so. If it wasn't yeah, for this, I could never, I remember that one time I went to the Nevada one. Sometimes I Zoom call um, a third club in Southern Oregon because I can. I mean, both, both yeah. clubs I belong to are in Oregon. I mean, how many thousands of miles is that from England? You just think without this, uh, like our contests, like we had, our, we've, I've, I've just been involved in, in two contests. How could I have done that without Zoom? I would have, I just wouldn't have been able to compete because I'm too far away. I can hold an, I can hold a club officer position by remote. Did we ever think this was possible? Opportunities, opportunities. I mean, tonight, or it'll be my tonight, I'm going to Zoom call into another area contest. Only because I want to see who my competition is at division. <laughs> I want to see who their winner is. <laughs> Do you just think without Zoom? I mean, it's just it's just connecting the world. It's fascinating. I love well it. done, well done, speakers. Well done, Ankita. Great speech. Thank you. They were great speeches. Well done, Nikita. You pulled it off. You brought JP to Kampala. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did it, uh, Agaba. And I look forward to more of these meetings. Yeah, next time, Kampala will go to JP Morgan. 
Yeah, definitely. Actually, it was an amazing uh, meeting. Even I felt like we should, you know, continue doing joint meetings again and again. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree, Ankita. We make life simple. I mean, it's shared efforts. Hi, Janice. Mambo Janice. Thank you guys for a good meeting. Oh, well, done. Uh, <laughs> well done. Well done, Moses. It was such a great meeting. I enjoyed every bit of it. We're yeah. so glad. Thank you, Palestina. Sorry for the loss of your president. Jenny. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank um, you. Asante. Oh, Asante, Asante. We have Dr. Christine. Dr. Dr. Christine. Dr. <laughs> She's muted Dr. though. Dr. Good to see you, Dr. Christine. Dr. I like the yeah. energy yeah. this yeah. morning. <laughs> and you're very smart. You're muted, <laughs> Dr. Christine. I'm yeah. unmuted, huh? Oh, I wish yeah. I could hear her. <laughs> oh. Seems to be having very nice information. We cannot but... hear you. We cannot hear you. you. Oh, happy to be here. Better late than never. Somebody had mm -hmm. to represent you in Washington, D.C. last night. So as you were sleeping, I was representing Division Fabulous. And then when you were waking up, I was going to bed because my jet lag, my time zone had changed. But I'm happy that I've found the tail end here. Well done, well done, well done. I, yes, it's recording. I need that recording. Um, Alex, that needs to be posted. Alex. We need to benchmark. So proud of the sun risers. And membership, membership, you know you are our best at membership. You're very close to Bukoto. So 25 members by 25th of March. I know if anybody can do it, any club can do it. It is the phenomenal, fabulous, surreal, Kampala Sunrises. Do I hear a yes, we are going to do it? Yeah. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you Amaro, for representing Sunrise at Lugoa yesterday. It was phenomenal. I love the vibe. I like the energy. Well done on the innovations. Keep them going. 25 by 25th. If you promise yes. me to have your 24th member on uh, on the by the 22nd, 23rd, I'll give you the 25th member, but only <laughs> and only if you have 24. Au revoir, bon weekend. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you guys. We need a Toastmaster of the day for the next meeting. Davis. <laughs> yes, Davis. The time is now. The time is now. I'm still breastfeeding. meet <laughs> <laughs> so, What is the weight? Or what is the there wheel? Is a... Which one is it? What is the wheel? What is the way? <laughs> Where there is a wheel, there is indeed a way. Yeah. Yeah. We have some guests. We have some guests. I see Ooh. Prosid and Pussy. Prosid, you want to unmute and talk to us? Tell us how you found us and how you found the meeting. Hey. Hi, everyone. Uh, I was I was my video Hi. was off. My audio was off for the whole meeting, but yeah, I'm glad to be here. I got to know about the team through through my colleague Derek Derek Natumanya. Oh, he was on our case. You guys need to join Toastmasters. You guys need to join this. And and by then it didn't make sense. But somehow when I when I had an interview just like two weeks back, the anxiety levels were so high because of the people I I could imagine the people I was going to meet and then I'm like, okay, can I do this? So immediately I, I noticed I had a weakness when it comes to speaking. 
Then I thought, I'm like, okay, Derek mentioned something about a group that can help me with the public speaking, that can help me with confidence levels. Immediately after, immediately after the interview, I was like, where is Derek's number? Where is Derek's number? So I texted him, then he gave me, then he was like, no, someone will contact you. So before I knew Agaba was in my inbox, he con um, then uh, he sent me the link, he sent me this link for the, for the meeting and um, I was so happy. I, I followed through, I, I saw the presenters. Yeah, I was so happy to be here. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Good, good to have you join us, Proci. Thank you. You're welcome. And the Shafi Hari Lutaya is yes. here. Yeah, thank you very much. Good to be with you. Yeah, good to be with you today. Yeah, it's my honor to uh, be a guest. I was invited by uh, my boss. I work with her at National Water. She's in Luwato's Masters. Yeah, so she invites me to be around and see what happens. And eventually I'll join. I'll be happy to join you guys. We'll be looking forward. Make sure you contact us again yeah. and we'll put you in our database. We can invite you again and again and again. All okay, right. People. Have a nice weekend, guys. Yeah. You too. Right. Thank you, people. <laughs> Lovely weekend. You too. Thank you, Faith, for the flights. It was also Thanks, nice Faith. to know the meaning of your name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yes, it is. All right, people, until Thank next you. Saturday, let's keep it real. Keep it at sunrise. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.